fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> His faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I am Silver. Hey! Dan Reed, young nephew of the Lone Ranger, while spending his summer vacation with the masked man and Tonto, had gone to a certain mission to pay his respects to the Padre, an old friend. One afternoon, he returned to the camp near the town of Rock Hill in southern Texas. Ho, 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 steady boy. Hello, Dan. Did you enjoy your visit? Yes, sir. Padre sent his regards to you and Tano. I hope he's in good health. Oh, he's fine. He, he sent this letter. Thanks. Hmm. It's addressed to me, care of the mission. That's right, sir. The padre said it arrived by courier a few hours before I got there. That's why I shortened my visit and came back. I, I thought it must be important. I'll soon find out. Oh, Dan. Hello, Tano. Did not stay long at mission. No, Tano. I brought a letter to the Lone Ranger. Tano, this is from the governor at Austin. It's marked confidential, so I can't tell you about it. Something urgent has come up, and the governor requests that I go to Austin at once. Oh, we ride with you, Kimasabi? No. He writes that others may suspect he sent for me and that there's danger of my being intercepted. And what we do? Stay here in this camp for the next two days. It's Thirty miles to Austin from here. Yes, I know. Now, as I said, wait here two days. Then you and Dan meet me in the large stand of cottonwoods just north of San Antonio. Uh -huh. now, one more thing. No matter what happens, Tonto, carry out the orders I've given you. That's very important. Uh -huh. I'll start for Austin at once. Goodbye, Dan. Bye, sir. I'll meet you outside of San Antonio in the afternoon of the third day. Adios, Toro. Adios, Kimasabi. Come on, Silver! That afternoon in a farmhouse located between Rock Hill and the state capital of Austin, a man known as Captain Parlin who had been discharged for disloyalty, both from the army and as military aid to the governor, paced the floor as he talked to a few of his renegade followers. Our plans have been carefully made, and we'll go into action day after tomorrow. No one suspects that this cotton plantation is a cover-up. The field workers out there are men that Carlos has brought in from across the border. Si, senor capitan. You will find them good fighters, even though they do not do so well as cotton pickers. I've been careful to pick hombres who deserted from the Mexican army. And along with them, we've trained men who have seen fit to, let us say, denounce the United States Army. Men who are watching the trail between Austin and San Antonio have made sure no couriers got through to the army post there, Captain. You've done a good job, Buck, and you won't be sorry. In three days, I hope to take over the governorship of this state lock, stock, and barrel. You'll all be well rewarded for your part. It's one thing to take over the capital and declare yourself governor, Captain. But it'll be another thing to hold it. That's right, Captain. Gee. I've planned this for a long time, Buck. Through Carlos, I've notified the Mexican authorities that if I succeed, I'll immediately issue a decree giving back to Mexico all the territory between San Antonio and the Rio Grande. Uh -huh. I'm sure they'll back me up, with troops if necessary. Well, we have just 200 men. What about the United States Army? The largest concentration of troops is at the Army post at San Antonio. 400 cavalrymen. And I've learned from one of their couriers who secretly joined our cause that 300 of them are leaving tomorrow for Fort Stockton. But the United States government will take action, Captain. The United States government is busy trying to avert a war between the states. I'm sure the president would hesitate to send soldiers that may be needed elsewhere here to quell a disturbance. Oh, no, Buck. The time is right, and I know we'll succeed. Sounds good, Captain. Hey, somebody come. It must be Frank Niles, one of our men who's been working for the governor. Hello, Frank. Hello, Captain. 
What's up, Frank? The governor called in his military aide this morning and told me to leave his office. I listened outside the door, which I left slightly open. What did you hear? Well, as soon as he thought I was out of earshot, the governor started talking. Norris, three days ago, an army scout arrived from San Antonio and informed me no couriers had come through from here. Now, we know two were sent during the past week. That's right, Governor. There's something in the wind, and I don't like it. Consequently, after talking to that scout, I sent a letter in a plain envelope by stage mail to a certain mass friend of mine who helps the law. I asked him to come here, explaining I felt something treacherous was brewing. I expect him most any time. Who is he, sir? The Lone Ranger. I'm sure he'll find out what's going on. I warned him to be on guard coming here. I hope he gets through. I agree with you. There's something brewing. That must be something very serious. That's all I heard, Captain. But I thought you should know about the masked man. Yes, I've heard of him. He's dangerous to our cause. We must stop him. That's right. right. Carlos, take one or two men with you and watch the trail. I've heard the governor talk about him. He rides a white stallion and wears a mask. It's up to you to see that he doesn't reach Austin. The following morning, Tonto went to town several miles away, leaving Dan in camp. It was mid-morning when Dan heard fast hoofbeats approaching. It's Silver with an empty saddle. Oh, Silver, ho, ho, fella, ho, boy. <laughs> Something's happened to the Lone Ranger. I wish Tonto were here. We'll be back for some time. The Lone Ranger is lying hurt somewhere. I have to do something right away. Panic-stricken by the return of Silver without the Lone Ranger, Dan thought only of finding the masked man as soon as possible. He made a quick decision to leave Silver tied in camp with a note attached to the saddle. I can follow Silver's tracks and find the Lone Ranger. Mentano will follow me and bring Silver. I'll leave right now. Easy, Victor. Steady, fellow. Come on, Victor. An hour after Dan Reed left camp to search for the Lone Ranger, Tonto returned. Oh, scum, oh, fella. Easy, scum. Easy, fella. Oh, there's silver. Tied to sapling. But he's strange. Dan not here. Lone Ranger not here. Oh, a note. Tonto... Silver back without Lone Ranger. I'm following his tracks and leaving Silver for you to bring when you follow my trail. The Lone Ranger must be hurt. Decided not to wait. Dan. Oh, it's not good. Me take Silver and follow Dan. But even as Tonto gave voice to the thought he suddenly remembered the masked man's parting words. No matter what happens, Toto, carry out the orders I've given you. That's very important. Dan, forget what Lone Ranger say. Maybe Dan ride into danger. The loyal Indian, close, trusted friend of the Lone Ranger, had never questioned nor disobeyed directions given by the masked man. Now he was torn between the impulse to follow Dan, who might be going into danger and the strong desire to carry out his promise to the Lone Ranger. The directions had been to stay in camp for two days, then meet the masked man outside of San Antonio. Dan, not obey, Lone Ranger. Him get worried when Silver come back alone. It's time to leave for San Antonio. <laughs> Scout, we take Silver. Go where Lone Ranger say. Reluctantly, Tonto untied Silver, then mounted his horse, Scout. Easy, Scout, easy, fella. Dan, young man, now. Me hope him not get into trouble. Dan, no way to meet in place. Get him up, scout. Come, Silver. Meantime, Dan Reed followed the tracks left by Silver when the great horse returned to the camp. Many miles from the camp, the trail Dan was following joined the main trail between San Antonio and Austin. Before Dan reached that point, a sudden storm broke. This is bad, Victor. The rain is washing away the tracks we've been following. I'll keep going anyhow. Come on, Victor! 
The storm was of short duration, but by the time Dan reached the main trail, the tracks were washed out. Nevertheless, he continued in the direction of Austin, while scanning both sides of the trail for the Lone Ranger. Finally, as he approached a thicket, three horsemen rode out and barred his way. Stop and reach! Ho, ho, big, ho, ho! Where are you going, amigo? Toward Austin. Hey, Carlos, that's the kind of horse a masked man rides, a white stallion. You've seen him? You know where he is? So you know the masked man, eh, senor? Yes, I... Dan stopped. He suddenly realized by the expression on Carlos's face that he was saying too much. Carlos spoke. I am glad to learn you know him. Where is he? Speak up, quick. I don't know. Maybe he sent you ahead to make sure the way is clear, hoping nobody would stop a youth such as you. Tell us what you know about him. There's nothing to tell. Why bother with him here, Carlos? I'll take him back to headquarters. The captain will get the right answers. You two stay here and watch in case the masked man comes along. All right, Buck. Take him to the Capitan. I'm sure he can tell plenty. If he tries to get away, shoot him. He won't get away. All right, you ride ahead of me. I'll tell you which way to go. Now, go on. Come on, Victor. Hit him. Hit him. Buck, holding a gun, directed Dan to the farmhouse in the hills. Oh, hold it. Oh, 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 Victor. Oh, oh, easy. All right, get up your horse. Walk ahead of me into the house. Easy, fella. Steady. What's all this about? You'll find out soon enough. Now, get going. <laughs> This. We stopped him on the trail heading for Austin, Captain. We found out he knows the masked man. Oh, that's interesting. Young man, where is that friend of yours? I don't know. Answer the captain. Oh, no. If you weren't holding that gun, but I am holding it. I notice you don't have one. Now sit down. Go on, sit down. Now what? Evidently you don't realize how serious this is. What's your name? Dan Reed. So you know the Lone Ranger. You already Ooh. said so, Captain. Very well. Now tell me where he is. I wish I knew. He knows all right, Captain. We ought to beat it out. No, no, wait. When I was the governor's aide, he spoke a great deal about the Lone Ranger. And I remember him saying there was an Indian and a youth who were the masked man's close friends. This must be the young man he meant. Well, maybe so. But what about it? Tie him, gag him. Put him in one of the back rooms. We'll hold him as a hostage in case the masked man escapes Carlos. <laughs> and he may decide not to interfere to save this young man's life. Let's pause right here. The Lone Ranger rides again. In a moment... Stan Freeberg here. The Radio Spirits Catalog features thousands of cassettes and CDs of old-time radio. Call right now and Radio Spirits will send you their latest catalog absolutely free. Call Radio Spirits right now at 1-800-RADIO-48. That's 1-800-723-4648. And now, let's return to those thrilling days of yesteryear with Tonto and the Lone Ranger. In Austin, the governor looked up as his aide entered. Yes, what is it, Norris? Nice? There's someone in the ante room who insists upon seeing you, sir. Who is he? An old man, governor. He insists it's important. Yeah. I told him you were busy in the state's business. He handed me this. Yeah. A silver bullet. Yes. Must be some kind of threat. Show that man in at once. Yes, sir. The governor will see you. Afternoon, Governor. This here fellow tried to keep me from seeing you. <laughs> Norris, wait outside. Yes. <laughs> I see my disguise is effective. I certainly wouldn't have suspected that we whiskered old codger like you to Actually, be the Lone Ranger. I knew you'd know by the bullet who was waiting. Yes. Uh, do sit down. Oh, thank you, sir. I left late yesterday afternoon as soon as I received your letter. By the time I reached the main trail, darkness had fallen. The sky was cloudy, so there was no moonlight. 
Because of the information about the two missing couriers, I decided to camp for the night, assume a disguise, and take the morning stage from there to Austin. And uh, what about your horse? I turned him loose. Because of your warning, I realized someone might be watching and recognize him, even though I was disguised. I'm uh, sure he went back to camp. It was a clever way to get here without detection. I wanted to pass along the main trail by daylight to look things over. Did you find out anything? Yes, sir. After I sent Silver back to camp, the stage came along and I hailed it. Several miles back along the trail, three men waved down the stage. Silver, stop that stage! Oh, hold there! Oh, come on! Oh, 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 oh. You're heading to somebody, driver. I will look inside the coach. Get up, man. Oh, oh. Good morning, senor. Morning. What's this all about? Now, if you're outlaws, you won't get anything much from me. We are not after your dinero, old one. I was hoping there might be another passenger. You have not seen a masked man on the trail, huh? Nope. What's more, I don't hanker to see one either. Just going to Austin to visit a friend. Need all my cash to go back. You keep the cash. We don't want it. Ho, oh, ho there. Ho, oh, oh. ho. Hey, Carlos, why are you wasting time talking to that old codger? Captain's not interested in hombres like him. Let's go. All right. Adios. Get up. Get up. Get up. They rode away, Governor, and the stage came on to Austin. What do you make of it? They were looking for me, I believe. I recognize the Mexican Carlos from Handbills I've seen. He's a deserter from the Mexican army, and at one time tried to lead a revolt against the Mexican state of Chihuahua. That is news. After we left them, I noticed far more workers in the cotton fields than a planter would need, and I could see they were not used to the work. Yes. Then you think... I think Carlos and the others are planning something big, Governor. The fact that they've cut off your communications with the post at San Antonio is serious. But what can be done? What do you suggest? I'll uh, take the afternoon stage back to San Antonio. If they stop us again, I'll say my friend here was away, so I decided to return home. I'm sure I'll not have trouble getting through. Uh -huh. And uh, then? I gave Tonto directions to meet me there in the morning with my horse. I'll tell the post commandant what I think and uh, suggest you send a note requesting the troops to come here to Austin to prevent trouble. I'll write the note at once, sir. And rely on you to get it to Major Rector. The Lone Ranger, still in disguise, took the afternoon stage carrying the message from the governor to the major at the army post in San Antonio. He arrived without mishap that night, and after removing his disguise and again wearing his mask, went to the post where he was known and received by the commandant. After plans were made to take the cavalry to Austin the following morning, the masked man walked to the Cottonwood Grove, where he found Tonto waiting. Tonto, where's Dan? He must have it. Dan get upset when Silver come back without Ryder. Me not there. Him leave this note. Oh. Kneeling by the campfire, the masked man quickly read the note Dan had left for Tonto. Then he spoke. I'm sure Dan rode into trouble. Too bad he didn't follow my instructions. And what we do? Go find him, of course. I'll stop and notify the Major we're riding on ahead. Good boy, Silver. Good boy. Too bad you couldn't talk and tell Dan what happened. You not say what happened. I'll tell you as we ride. All right, let's go. Easy, steady, me, scout, easy, fella. Come on, Silver! Come on, scout! That night, the moon was bright. After talking again to the Major, the Lone Ranger rode with Tonto toward the place where Carlos and his two cronies had stopped the stage. The faint flush of dawn was in the sky when they cautiously approached, then pulled to one side into the thick woods. Who's in the road? Easy, 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 Tonto, we were stopped before right around the bend ahead. Now, he go through wood. See if them watch trail now. Tonto moved like a shadow through the woods. He saw a man near the trail sitting on a log with a rifle across his knees. Tonto silently crept up behind him. Suddenly, the Indian's arm encircled the man's neck from behind. Uh, 
I'll you keep a while. Uh, I'm unconscious now. I'm in time. I'm... Soon, Tonto rejoined the Lone Ranger, and the two men rode to the spot where the guard had been stationed. Wolf and scout, wolf fella. Tonto, there are hoof marks going back into the hills from here. We'll follow them and see where they lead us. Come on, Silver. Get them up, scout. From a wooded ridge, the two men finally saw the farmhouse. Leaving the horses hidden among the trees, they made their way warily through the thick brush to the back of the house. In one of the back rooms, Dan Reed, still tied and gagged, lay unguarded on a cot. Suddenly, his attention was drawn to the window, which moved slowly and quietly upward. Dan, there he is, Tunnel. Quickly, the masked man removed the gag. Then untied Dan. There. Thanks. I thought you... Don't talk. Let's get out of here. Still hidden by the brush, the two men and Dan reached the ridge. Dan told of the plans he had overheard. Then said... I I can't leave Victor. You ride with me now, Dan. We'll get Victor for you later. I'm very much surprised that you disobeyed my instructions, Dan. In spite of the concern he must have felt, Tonto carried them out to the letter. I'm sorry. Promise me that never again will you ignore any instructions I may give you. I promise, sir. Good enough. Tonto, we'll ride to meet the cavalry. We'll leave Dan in a safe place until the excitement is over. The Major and his men will take these renegades by surprise. All right, let's go. Up you come, Dan. There you are. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Shortly after Dan's rescue, Captain Parlin entered the main room of the farmhouse, where Carlos and a few of the men were waiting. Well, men, today is the day. Carlos, si, Capitan. get all the men together and ready to ride. Uh, what about the mass man? He didn't show up. We still hold the young hombre. <laughs> we'll take that young man with us, tied to his horse. Uh. And if that mask man appears, I'll threaten to kill the young man unless he... Hey, Captain! What? One of the men saw some cavalry riding through the fields. Why? Caramba! Oh. men! They're already attacking. We'll assemble our forces. Come on! The captain, Carlos, and Buck rushed out to lead the fight. But their surprise was complete when they saw cavalry moving in from every side. Adam, men! Stand in front! A battle raged for some time, and many cavalrymen as well as renegades fell. Finally outnumbered and fighting against well-trained soldiers, the renegades surrendered. The battle was over. After the battle, Dan's horse, Victor, was found unharmed. When he was ready to leave with the Lone Ranger and Tonto, the Major spoke to the masked man. Sir, but for you, that traitor, former Captain Parlin, might have succeeded. I'm very glad we could help, Major. I'm sure the Governor will want to see you and thank you in person. We'll ride to Austin now and report to the Governor. I'm sure you'll know how to take care of those traitors. You may rest assured of that, my friend. Adios, Major. Adios, mister. Let's go, Tonto Dan. Come on, Silver. Come on, Scout. Come on, Victor. There goes one of the finest Americans I've ever known. I don't believe anyone loves his country more or has greater hatred for traitors than the Lone Ranger. This is a feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. Created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer.